Hi guys, in this lesson I'm gonna talk about my vision on scale practice and what I think you might want to focus on. Nine out of ten times when I come across people talking about scales and scale practice on guitar uh, among students or uh, online or in books then uh, the emphasis is mostly on technique and uh, speed and dexterity and synchronization and stuff like that um, which is all fine, you need that of course but um, I think maybe if you want to practice scales you could look at what you want to do with the scales in the end and then uh, if you look at why you want to practice the scales and what you want to get out of it you can maybe find better ways to actually play them which is how you want to practice them so that's what I'm going to try and go over in, uh, in this lesson uh, I chose to do this uh, in one position, just uh, to keep it simple. Um, maybe I'll do later lessons about how you can practice uh, along the neck or on string sets or something like that. But uh, in this case, just to look at the way we usually start by practicing scales, which is just in a position. I don't really um, care what kind of position you use. You want to have as many positions uh, so that you can cover the neck in a nice way. There's this huge discussion. Uh, going on with uh, Levi Clay and Tom Hess about whether or not you should use more than five positions. Personally I use seven, um, but that's just my preference. There are a lot of people who use five and that's fine too. It doesn't really matter too much, um, at least not for this. Uh, it's more about how you actually work on them and uh, what you try to get out of it. So what is the goal with scale practice? Uh, if we take the C major scale and then play that in uh, the eighth fret, so we would have this position what we want to do is we want to have an overview of the notes in this position so the C major scale and we want to know like C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C uh, so when you practice in the beginning you want to practice in a tempo where you can actually still think uh, think along and have have an overview of what note is so that whatever note you just played you know what name of the note what the no name of the note is in the beginning that can be difficult and it does require you to actually know all your major scales so if you're playing in E flat major you need to know what the notes of E flat major are um, there are lots of lessons on YouTube and other places where you can learn how to figure that out and um, it might seem difficult if you're not used to it in the beginning but on the other hand your mind is a lot faster than your fingers so if you give it a week or two I'm, I'm sure you'll get really used to it and then it's going to be a matter of knowing the scale and not just knowing a pattern, because it has to become it has to come deeper than knowing some sort of visual pattern of notes that you can just run. You need to know the individual notes, you need to know what they are compared to whatever root you think of in that scale at that point. So that means that when you're practicing this, you're actually practicing all seven modes of this scale. Uh, you don't really need to redo this and then think another mode. That's gonna be a waste of time. You might as well just practice uh, playing over a chord with this scale, emphasizing the notes of that chord which is uh, how you need to work anyway because uh, in a lot of, at least if you're playing jazz in a lot of standards the key stays pretty much the same but the chords fly left and right and you have to follow them and within the scale different notes will be the ones you need to target once you know how to play the scale itself and you know what notes are in there you need to start working on developing some flexibility so that you can play some more uh, varied melodies than just running up and down the scale and uh, the easiest one to do since this is all stepwise, if we skip one and make and play it in diatonic thirds then that's probably the easiest um, exercise to go through and you can do that in different variations with all the exercises that I'm going to go over here today it's not about speed, it's about um, knowing what's going on, it's about playing it and um, to some degree it's actually not about not having it in your fingers but just being able to think about what it is and then take it through the scale so you want to practice this open-ended, you want to practice in different keys not always the same key so that you can think in different keys and so that you can play this fluently in a slow tempo um, because when you're improvising you're going to get ideas and you need to practice towards executing those ideas whether it's just something that you can think of or something you hear or you need to work like that so in that way you just want to practice this fairly um, fairly slow but also open-ended so come up with new things all the time try to vary what you're doing and uh, for the thirds, there are three ways that I would suggest you will go through those. So um, that would be first just playing the thirds, like... And uh, 
of course you can also play them uh, the other ways. Now we're playing them ascending. If we play them descending, you would play something like this. And you can mix the two so you can go up one, down the next one. And you, can, you notice I'm not really playing this fast. I'm just trying to play it through and keep it flowing and uh, having that overview and using that. Um, so we use the thirds. The thirds are in themselves, I mean they're handy because um, we have another interval we can play. So we can actually do some more interesting melodies than just. Um, and uh, the other thing that we need them for is also their building blocks. So the other uh, two exercises, or two types of exercises that I would suggest you work on in your scale positions um, are built out of thirds, because they're triads and they're uh, the diatonic seventh chords. So let's start working on the triads. The triads are of course just the basic chords, and you want to practice them um, as a stepping stone. The same way you want to use the thirds as a stepping stone towards the triads, you also want to work on the uh, triads as a stepping stone towards uh, diatonic seventh chords. But I think if you've seen any of my other lessons, or if you just start checking out any kind of um, jazz improvisation lessons, uh, the triads are really important. There are very strong melodic structures that you can use, so um, for that reason it's very useful to just check them out. Um, the basic way to play triads in, uh, in a scale would be this. The same way as, as I showed with the thirds, you can do them descending, you can do them um, uh, mixed, so up one, down the next one, and stuff like that. But with triads also, because you again want to work towards being flexible in, the, in your melodies, uh, you want to play different permutations of them. So a triad is of course root, third, fifth. So you can play them like... can play them um, all so on and so on. So in that way you're working towards being able to just play anything you can think of and keeping it open-ended. So the last structure that I suggest you check out when you're working on your scales and positions like this is the diatonic seventh chord. Uh, diatonic seventh chords are going to be um, sort of your main building blocks if you're working on uh, improvising on jazz harmony, uh, well, at, least, at least mainstream jazz or modern jazz harmony. Uh, and they're also going to be the ones that are sort of connecting you with the different modes and uh, they're going to be the ones that you can use if you want to practice a, a song in, uh, in this position, in this key, then uh, those are the ones you need to work on first because those are the notes you want to target and maybe that's the exercise you want to make out of it to so just play through the arpeggios of a song in this position, for, in, for instance. Um, the way you want to work on this is, of course, again, just play the arpeggios and know which arpeggios they are, uh, know exactly what notes are in the arpeggios. All this stuff is important to check out because it's going to help you relate everything you play to what you, um, what chord you're playing it over and, and what chord you're thinking when you're playing it. So that if you're playing on a, on a C major chord, then you can still relate the E minor 7 arpeggio to it and you know what the different notes are compared to the C root that you're playing on. It's also going to be so that thinking like this is what's going to help you play modes. So you don't want to have to practice different uh, scales for the modes. If you have to play a long stretch of D minor Dorian, with this scale you can just um, use the, the position that we just went over and uh, you can then emphasize the notes of the arpeggio of the diatonic uh, arpeggio on the second degree uh, of the scale, so this D minor 7 arpeggio and uh, use that sound to uh, convey a Dorian sound. So you want to practice just the arpeggios themselves and that would be something like this. And of course you can uh, do different uh, permutations of this, play them up and down and uh, 
play up one, down the next one, or something like uh, one that's good that I use a lot is this one. <laughs> Of course there are other ones too and you can start working a bit on uh, um, doing different uh, kinds of patterns within the notes themselves and you want to check out as many as you can. Again it's the same as with the triads, the more ways you know how to play this the more freedom you have when you want to improvise with them and uh, that's the thing that's important. So that was like three suggestions of uh, some basic structures that you want to check out in your major scales or in your melodic minor or harmonic minor scales. Um, as you can tell when I work on scales I don't really think about the modes too much, I'm just playing in the key which means that I only have to play um, three different scales for all the seven note scales because I only need the major, the harmonic minor and the melodic minor and then through just thinking in terms of uh, arpeggios and which notes to emphasize I kind of have myself covered with that, I don't need to have a, set, a special set of Lydian dominant scales or also scales like that I just work on using it and that makes more sense to me um, of course, maybe for other people it's different, but that's at least what always worked better for me, and it's quite efficient. Um, you don't want to only practice, of course, just thirds and triads and um, and uh, diatonic seventh chords. Uh, basically, you want to check out everything you can. If you can come up with a structure, then try and move it in the scale. Try and play it in the position. So, whether it be shells, uh, shell voicings, or uh, drop two voicings, or um, uh, stacks of fourths or stacks of fifths, they're all good to check out and it's important to try and do that. Just do it slowly and it's as much an exercise in just um, having that overview and, and figuring out like how to play this in the scale and knowing what notes are in those structures um, on different places as it is an exercise in just playing. So the scale practice is not only technique, it's not only dexterity, it's also about knowing what notes are there and being able to understand all the different possibilities you have of putting those notes together and also maybe getting an idea about how that sounds, so you need to listen to what you're doing while you're playing uh, besides thinking and playing, which is a lot of stuff, but uh, I guess playing music is uh, complicated in that way anyway. I hope you can use the exercises that I went over here in your own scale practice and maybe uh, that it can give you some ideas and some inspiration for new exercises uh, to work on and um, that, that can give you some new ideas for melodies also of course. Uh, if you want to download a PDF of the exercises, you can go to my website in the article that's accompanying this lesson. There's a PDF download of all the exercises. On my website, you can also subscribe to my newsletter if you want to stay up to date with uh, what is going on, where I'm playing, or uh, if uh, stuff is coming out that I'm playing on, or other things, if I'm making a guest lesson somewhere. I also um, publish uh, lessons in my web store, and uh, I also mention those in my newsletter. Um, if uh, this is the first uh, lesson you've seen in mind, you can uh, of course subscribe to my channel. I make a new lesson every Thursday and uh, I've already been doing this for quite some time so there's really a lot of lessons on my channel already covering all sorts of uh, topics uh, related to jazz and improvising guitar. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions for topics or uh, things that you do differently um, then leave a comment on this video or uh, feel free to connect with me on uh, YouTube, uh, not on so much YouTube of course because that's subscribing to my channel, but uh, on Facebook and uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Google Plus, I'm on a lot of social media and uh, I do try to respond to all the comments and all the suggestions I get. So uh, that's it for this week. Uh, until next week, thank you for watching.